Hi folks, I wanted to come on today and give you an update on the fire situation here in Australia and also give you a special report on the claims that are being made of directed energy weapons being used here in Australia. The do's and the don'ts, the possibility, the non-possibility and just weigh it all up and, and see what we've got to deal with and what we are dealing with. And this may seem right out of left field to a lot of people out there watching especially many of the new subscribers. I've actually had something like 15 or 16,000 subscribers in the last 28 days to my channel. So thank you everyone for that. It's, it's really amazed me how quick the channel's grown since I started producing these fire reports. And thank you to the people who've been sharing them. And if you haven't seen the reports that I've done prior to this video, you'll find a link to the entire playlist below. In fact, everything I show you here today on this report all the websites I show you, you will find links to all of them below so you can go and check out the data for yourself. Um, but I thought it was important to address this, the possibility of directed energy weapons and address some of the information that's putting out there, what's true, what isn't true, and just really look at this objectively. And I think it's important to do that, folks, because a lot of people go into research with confirmation bias. They believe directed energy weapons are being used and so they go and they look for that. And if you go into something wanting something to be true and wanting to see evidence to support your confirmation bias you're going to find it every single time with every event that happens but you need to look at the whole event on a blank slate put every event on its own standalone event sure you can use certain comparisons to other events but you can't say well because this happened there it's now happening here you've got to really be careful with this folks because they're very very tricky you know, in order to understand how the people who believe they are the rightful controllers of this world think and how they operate, you need to be able to think six moves ahead and you need to be able to be aware for the pitfalls and be aware that every time information is exposed, the powers that be don't cover up the information. What they do is embellish it to the point that it becomes unbelievable. That's how counterintelligence works. If they just hid the information, you'd know it would be true. You'd know this was a, a note place that you should be going. So you, you've, got to, you've got to really be careful with this, folks, and beware of the pitfalls, and be very aware that there are agents out there poisoning the well. You know, and there's every opportunity and every chance that directed energies weapons may be being used. You know, of course, the question that's going to be in a lot of people's mind is, do directed energy weapons exist? And we're going to address that. I've got a lot of stuff to show you on this report today, and I'm going to keep it down as short as I can, but I have a lot of stuff to deal with. First of all, I want to deal with the fires. This is the situation here in Australia at the moment. As you can see, there are 152 fires burning. This is the awards. This is how the the little things work, the tags. All these blue ones, these are fires that are on advice. Watch and advise on what these fires are going to do. No imminent danger right now. The fires are still quite huge, as you can see, but no imminent danger. You've just got to watch and wait and see where they're going to go. If you look at the potential spread of the fires for today, January 10th, this is what we're looking at today. We've actually had a few cool days in the last few days, a bit of a reprieve. Almost had some rain last night, but they just didn't let it come. And this is what we've got at the moment. But even though we've had a few cool days, it is very, very hot today. I've actually got the fan on. I hope it isn't disturbing the audio. But it's a very, very hot day, and we're heading for a very, very hot weekend, and they're expecting the fires to increase quite dramatically. Again, I say they're pushing the rain away, you know, and it, it's just something that we'll look at in a minute. This is uh, some of the views of the fires. As you can see, quite big fire fronts. And Kangaroo Island has also started raging again. This is what we're seeing on Kangaroo Island. That is, oops, I like the way they do that. Just jump you back to the top. This is what we're seeing on Kangaroo Island today. A couple of kangaroos jumping past there. I really do feel for the wildlife here, folks. I really do. But anyway, that's the situation that we're facing. As I said, they're pushing the rain away. I've, I've said that this is what they're doing with the Doppler radars, and I've been trying to get hold of a lady, her name is Raphael. I've made contact with a friend of hers, and I've sent a message for her to contact me on Skype. If you're watching this, Raphael, please contact me on Skype. I'd like to have you on to discuss the research you have on Doppler radars, because you're really the one with the goods on this, and the stuff you showed me at Virginia Beach is definitely worth sharing. But if you look at this radar image here, folks, look at this, this is a Doppler radar readout. You look at the cloud bank going over and you look through this area here. See that little spot there? That little spot. The clouds just part around that spot. And that's where the Doppler radar is. So it's just ticking over at the moment. But imagine if they increase the bandwidth and they can spread that out to a large circle. 
So, you know, they do affect the clouds, folks. And you can see by this image here where the clouds part and there is never any cloud over that section of radar. They do affect the clouds. And I'd also like to put out a message here while I remember as well to Ray from the Chemtrails Canberra Group or Canberra Chemtrails Group, whichever one it is, for some of the help that she has given to me. And also to my friend Steve, who has been doing some fantastic research for me and tracing photographs and just vetting things for me. So that's what's going on. I also want to address some of the claims that are being made of the situation here. Some of the maps that are appearing online, folks, these maps are deceptive. This is not all these big lumps of fire. This is not what's happening in Australia. It's not as bad as these maps are showing you. It's bad, but it's not as bad as these maps are showing you. This map is ridiculous. If Australia actually looked like that, you'd find that 90% of the population would already be dead. So um, you've got to be careful of what you're sharing and what information that you're looking at and, and be careful to vet this information. I mean, this is done by the news and look what they've done. They've made the fireballs. It looks like the whole place is ablaze. We don't have a lot of fires in Queensland. We don't have any fire warnings in Queensland at all. We've got fires going on, but nothing compared to what's going on in New South Wales and Victoria. So be very careful of some of the things you're sharing, folks, okay? Because, you know, we've got a real situation here. And we need to be very careful that we're vetting things properly. Of course, while it's happening, they're still corporatizing the water. This was done in October 2002. It explains how it's all going on, water mismanagement. Again, link below. Go and check it out. Um, and they've still got the fighting aircraft in mothballs, which could be available in a week in the Northern Hemisphere, but the government simply isn't requesting them or accepting offers for them to be sent here. So that's the situation that we're facing here at the moment, folks. And we'll go back and check that fire map at the end of this presentation and see what this fire count is, if I remember, I hope I remember. If not, link below, you can go and check it out for yourself. So getting on to the topic of directed energy weapons, and again, this may seem completely out of left field for a lot of people, but there's a lot of claims being made, and I think it's important to address them, see what's real and what isn't, and address some of the disinformation that's being out there. And st I stress the importance of people vetting information before they share it. There's a couple of pics that have been put out. I'll just show you one here, and we'll come back to it. Um, what did I do with that folder? Sorry, folks, I've closed the folder. Let's get back to normal. Here we are, there's the folder, and there's a couple of pics that are being shared. Here is one here of this beam coming out of the sky. And here is another one with a beam coming out of the sky. If you look at that first one, you'll find there's actually two beams coming out of the sky. There's one there and there's another much fainter one there. And the claims are being made this is a directed energy weapon. This is proof of directed energy weapons being used in Australia. Now, the first thing we need to establish, and I'm gonna come back to that picture in a little while, but the first thing we need to establish is are directed energy weapons real? The question is rather pertinent to a lot of people. There's a lot of people that don't believe they are. And also there's something else I want to show you which has caused me to want to do this. Is this post that was put on Facebook as well by Steve Holmes. Higgins Storm Chasing had an article up the other day that, which has been censored and removed by Facebook showing pictures of the Raytheon Company USA fitting directed energy laser weapons to Learjets at an airport near Geelong. They then tracked these aircraft the next few days and discovered they'd been flying crosshatch directly over the fires in New South Wales. Higgins storm chasing are quite reputable. Okay, so that's the claim being made. So what we do when you see something like that, and like I said, the, this is Paradise, California. The claims are being made that the, what we're seeing here in Australia is the same as Paradise. Well, well, this is Paradise, California. You can look at what's been done here. Places are just completely flattened and nothing left at all. This isn't exactly what we're seeing in Australia, folks. We're seeing plenty of remnants and we're seeing plenty of fire trail going to a lot of these places. So I would suggest this is not the result of a directed energy weapon. This is the result of a very bad fire. You know, and you know, these fires are terrible, folks. Look at this. This is, this is terrible stuff going on here. So, you know, but that isn't to say directed energy weapons aren't being used. That's the thing. You've, you've just got to look at things objectively and not go in with confirmation bias. 
I mean, this again looks like a normal bushfire scene. These all look like normal bushfire scenes. Sure, you've got trees standing, but the trees are burnt. The bottom of the trees are burnt. The leaves are all browned. These trees are uh, not going to recover quickly. I mean, some of them will. But, you know, this isn't evidence of directed energy weapons, tyres and, and hubcaps and burnout cars and shit. And, you know, it just isn't. And, you know, collapsed roofs on houses and things. This is what you expect to see in a forest fire. So, you know, you've got to be careful of what you're, what you're sharing and make sure you're vetting the information that you are sharing because we have a real opportunity to wake the world up to what is going on here with the Australian fires. Now that claim that was made by that person that this report came from Higgins Storm Chasing and this picture has been shared repeatedly on Facebook. I've seen it posted everywhere. Well, the first thing you do when you see a picture like that is you contact Higgins Storm Chasing and you ask them, which is what I did. Or well, I had a friend do it, my friend Steve, and I'd actually like to put a, a thank you here to my friend Steve, who's been doing a lot of gopher work for me, and also to Ray from the Chemtrails Australia group on Facebook because she's been supporting Steve in his gophering. So that's been very, very helpful. So thank you both. I cannot thank you enough. It's certainly saved me a lot of time. But Higgins Storm Chasing is the, the claim that this report came from. So I contacted Higgins Storm Chasing and they said to me, well, they sent a letter back. They actually sent it back to my friend Steve. I might even have it here. No, I don't have a screenshot of it. But anyway, <clears throat> they sent back a message saying, no, we didn't post that report. That report was actually posted by an imposter group called Higgins Storm Chasers. It's not Higgins Storm Chasing. It's someone that's kind of taken on that name and is presenting information and a lot of people are getting it mixed up. So that, that's, you, you've got you've to vet things, folks. And as I said, that other photograph, and we want to come to these now, actually. These photographs, I've tried to trace the source of these photographs. A lot of them have been posted on Higgins Storm Chasing, but you go through there and you go through people, and after going through about six people, the photograph has been traced back to quite possibly the original poster being this account here. Tressa Green, but this is one of the most secret Facebook pages you would ever see. You can message them, which we've done, and they haven't replied. There's nothing on this page. You can't even send them a friend request. It's a very interesting page. I've also found another page by this woman, same person, appears to be the same person, same attitude, definitely. Government is organised crime. It seems to be the same person, so I will attempt to contact them as well. But that seems possibly to be the original source of that picture. So what we need to first establish for a lot of people is are directed energy weapons real? And if they are real, does the United States government, the United States military and Air Force have these weapons? That's what we've got to do. Well, it's an unmanned vehicle versus energy and energy wins. It's called directed energy and the device delivering the focus firepower is Boeing's compact laser weapons system. The key to Boeing's compact laser weapon system is to focus energy on a spot small enough to heat up and damage a target. Think of it like a, a welding torch being put on target, but from many hundreds of meters away. The compact laser recently demonstrated its pinpointed precision in an exercise in Point Magoo, California. The system disabled an unmanned aerial vehicle at a tactical range. This is a look at the laser at work in real time. The focused laser takes down the UAV in seconds. Once we turned the laser on, it was about 15 seconds until the drone was clearly disabled. During previous tests in rugged terrain, the compact laser trapped and lazed a tethered UAV. Watch the silent, invisible laser suddenly ignite the vehicle. If you were on the receiving end of laser energy, you would have no idea where it was coming from or what was even happening. It's made up of four parts, a water-cooled chiller, battery power supply, a fiber laser, and an upgraded beam director. The redesigned beam director helped the system shed on one in pounds. First prototype to this system, we shed about 40% of our weight, which basically means that we can move it easier and also the, the motors are capable of driving the system faster. The compact laser system has a two kilowatt laser, and much like its bigger cousin, the High Energy Laser Mobile Demonstrator, or HLMD. One person can operate both systems. 
And like the name implies, the compact laser system helps portability. It's uh, four boxes with uh, very simple interconnects. While lasers have long been the staple of science fiction, the technology is on the brink of becoming battlefield ready. They're able to engage targets. Boeing has an edge in this since we've been working lasers for tens of years. Did you hear that, folks? Tens of years. And that was Boeing. That wasn't even Raytheon. There's the Directed Energy Market Research Report Global Forecast till 2025, Market Research Future, Global Directed Energy Weapons Markets, blah, 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 Directed Energy Weapons, blah, blah, blah. It tells you, yes, it's a big market for this stuff. A lot of people are very, very interested in these weapons. Link below. If you look at the question as to whether the Australian government has these weapons, Air Power Australia, High Energy Laser Directed Energy Weapons. This is a contractor to the Australian government and the Australian Air Force. This is what a directed energy mounted on a plane looks like, either there or on the undercarriage or possibly on top as well. It wouldn't be as effective on the top, you wouldn't be able to hit ground targets. So you would expect one to be on the nose of the aircraft or on the bottom fuselage of the aircraft. Now you can go through, you can look at all this stuff yourself. A high energy laser evaluation, how they work, you know, it, it's all here, folks. Everything is here. Um, how they're mounted in the planes, where it all goes, how it all works, beam control system, it, it's all there, folks. Here's a model of the planes. As, as you see there, there's one on the roof there as well. So here they are. Yes, directed energy weapons are real. This would be likely what this is up here. That would very likely be some sort of laser cannon. We have a lot of information on this, folks. Directed energy weapons are absolutely real. This is an artist's impression. And it's important to realize this is an artist's impression, folks. These red beams you see are artists' impressions. That's the thing. But the question of whether directed energy weapons are real is really a moot point folks yes they're very very real you can even go through here and you can look at some of the stuff here due EMP it's, it's all there Infowar EU technology media news it's all there folks you can go and look at it all yourself link is below we also got this electro laser there's a lot of evidence that directed energy weapons are real folks but coming back to this photograph is this photograph real? Well, like I said, I've traced it back to that one account. And the thing about directed energy weapons is that they're microwave weapons and you can't see microwaves. If you could see directed energy weapons that were being used, if you saw a red beam going across the landscape coming from a plane, you're going to run and get out of the way. You're going to have time to move. Red beams coming from the sky are something from Star Wars, folks. Microwaves are invisible. You know, when you cook food in your microwave oven, if you have one, I don't have one, but it, when you cook food in your microwave, you don't see little laser beams cooking the food. Microwaves are invisible. That's the point of them. They're directed energy. They're not a ray beam that you can see. Even if you get a laser pointer, you point a laser pointer at an object, you can't see the beam in the air. You only see the point that the laser makes. It'll absolutely blind you, take out your retina, but you can't see the beam getting to you. It'll do damage on the target but you can't see the beam. That's the point, and that's something to be very careful to remember when making claims of directed energy weapons, because as I said, there's a very, every chance they're using these things, but when you see stuff like this, it goes out to the general public and they see it and they go, oh, they're all tinfoil hatters, these guys. You know, so gee, I've been watching all these reports on the fire and now he's showing me beams from the sky. So, you know, you've got to be careful of what you're sharing, folks, and make sure you're vetting information. Another thing that has wanted me to do this report are a couple of videos that have been put up by this channel, A Plain Truth For You, I think it's called, I can't see, yeah, a, train, a Plain Truth For You. And actually, look, I like this guy. I've got no problem with this guy at all. He puts out some good stuff. We even have one or two mutual friends in real life. So I've never met him myself, but you know, I don't have a problem with this guy at all. But the claim here is that this is stuff from this post here by Anthony Haywood and we're discussing directed energy weapons in Australia. The use of directed energy weapons, he's saying, well, look, this is a laser cut. This is, looks like a directed energy weapon and all the grass is, is untouched and you've got these lines on the pavement and blah, blah, blah. 
And the first thing I look at, and the first thing I notice when I look at this picture is the surrounds, the background. I see the car, sure, but look at the background. I see this lawn, I see these trees cut like this, these little bushes. I see these houses, the shape of that front door, the shape of the windows, the way the house is built, the way this house is constructed. I see these police officers standing there and immediately say, this photograph was taken in England. This is not Australia, this is British architecture, British homes, this is British style of bushes, British roofs, and these guys are British police officers. This is a British police car, it's a little Ford. They drive around these little Fords. I can show you one here. There it is, a little triangle. The grill might be different, different model, different year, whatever, but it's the same type of car. This is, this is a photograph taken in England, folks. This is not Australia. So how valid is the stuff that Anthony Haywood is putting out? And this is the importance of vetting information. And like I said, I don't have a problem with the plain truth, but it's very careful that people vet the information that they're sharing. There's another photograph that he goes to up here. There it is there. And he's saying, well, look, this indicates a laser weapon from the front, melted engine block. You don't see that from a fire. I agree, this looks like a directed energy weapon, but what else do I see? What I see is a US fire truck bearing a US flag which indicates that this photograph probably comes from the Paradise Fires in California. This is not from Australia. So again, how valid are the photographs being posted by Anthony Haywood? And the question is, you know, if this is about laser weapons being used in Australia, why are pictures being included like this? Because this is not taken in Australia. We don't have fire trucks like this. We have red fire trucks. We don't have US flags hanging off the back of our fire trucks. The US flag should be a pretty good indication to anybody and, and the cops here, I mean, this is, this is not Australia, folks. It simply isn't. So it's important to look at this stuff, folks. It really is. As I said, there's the British police cars there. Now, what we've got here, I'll come back to this in a minute. The claim, uh, the claim that was made in that other, that picture that I showed you before, um, which is here, was that these directed energy weapons were being fitted to Learjets near Geelong. So the question is, would they be fitting directed energy weapons to Learjets? Is there anywhere that they use a Learjets? Well, here is a report. And also the report was that they were flying cross hatches a few days later. Here is one of the pics that was sent to me. And yes, this is over the fire zone. I actually did a capture of this. So here's the fire zone. Um, well, here's the... Which one have we got here? This one. Here is the fire zone. And if you look at that picture that I showed you before, which is there, yes, that's directly over the fire zone. And I've overlaid the pictures and there is the Learjet 35 flying directly over the fire zone. Interesting stuff. Why would they be doing that? Are they observing the fires or what are they doing? You've got to ask the question. The other shot that was shown to me, was sent to me, was this one. Yeah, and again, if you look at that first one, you see they're all, all, the, all the planes are disappearing to an airbase south of Wollongong. So what's the airbase south of Wollongong these Learjets are coming from? And as I said, there's the capture, there's the overlay of that flight. And if you look at this next one, from Canberra, again coming from a Lear base, south of Wollongong. That's actually Nowra. That base that these planes are coming from, I'll show you in a minute, it's, that's Nowra RAF base. And if you look at the overlay of that with the, with the fires near Canberra, that's the fires near Canberra. The plane was taking off from Nowra here, was flying grid patterns over there. Here is the overlay of that flight, again directly over the, the, the fires and you can see they're probably flying along here observing the fires as well seeing which way they're going to go so yes they're flying Learjets over the fires and yes we have Learjets at that air base at Nowra there it is there air affairs opens new base at Nowra Learjets how many Learjets do you see in that picture folks the whole place is full of Learjets LJ-35 Learjets. Again, link is below. Um, if you look at this, they've just been updated for electronic warfare training. Interesting thing as well. 
link below. And actually, if you go back to the archive news page that I showed you earlier and look at this, you'll find that these Learjets have been used to observe the fires. They're quite open about that, that they have been flying over the fires. So those crosshatch patterns we're seeing. The, uh, down the bottom here, there it is, there's the, the flight path they've been taking. Now these air bases have been taken off, off from, as I said, it's, it's narrower. And there's another base down here. I can show you these. If I can find Google Earth. Sorry, folks, I have everything in the wrong spot. Uh, you can look here. This is the RAF Air Base in Nara, where the Lear jets are actually taking off from to do these runs. And they're flying to a base down in Victoria, which is another RAF base, which is down here in East Sale. So that's the flight path. So you see they're quite open about doing this. You go and look at this, look through this website. Uh, it might be another one. Where is it? I've got so many open here, folks. This one here, Archive News, Air Affairs Australia. This was this uh, other site we were looking at. So you look at this monitoring system they've got there for the fires and what's going on. You've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 21 monitors in this room all streaming data into them. So you've got to ask how these fires are so out of control. Interesting thing, interesting thing. Now, the question of directed energy weapons, would directed energy weapons be being used? And I've got a little bit of a hypothetical I want to run through with this in a minute and uh, just see what you think of this. But have a look at this. A few people might have seen this, but just I'll run through a couple of little bits of this and, and check out this. Squad leader on Garden Valley Hell Attack. We're looking at a PSD machine or a plastic sphere dispenser with the PSD balls or ping pong balls, in which you can see sitting on the box there. So it's filled with balls. The balls then come through the chutes and then they're injected. And the balls are full of uh, potassium permanganate and then it's injected with glycol. And that chemical reaction creates fire. Uh, we like to shoot for a 20 to 30 second ignition time in, in best case scenario. If we can't get that, you know, we're shooting for up to 20, and, and hopefully that's good enough time for us to be able to fly low and slow, drop balls, and then ignite the fire the way we want to do it. So, like I said, it comes through the chutes, it goes into this device, it's injected with glycol. And okay, so you see that actually drops little ping pong balls injected with glycol and potassium, whatever it was he said, and they go down and start fires with them. They use them to create fire breaks. But how else could you construct these things? Could you construct these things so they didn't work on a timer like that, but actually worked on heat? Is that possible? That's an interesting thing as well. Now, coming to, sorry, I didn't mean to go there, but coming to some of these things here, these Learjets, these are not fitted with directed energy weapons that I can see, unless there's something up there. And there's also this, these little target jets. It's an interesting thing, isn't it? A little unmanned jet drone that you've got. I mean, very often I see trails across the sky, but I don't see any aircraft making the trails. And I wonder about that. Look at this picture here of the bushfires over Australia. That's the smoke. But what's all this other stuff? See these lines? Crisscross lines. These aren't flight paths, and they're so close together. What, what's making these lines? Could is it, a, is it a possibility that you could equip one of these jet drones with something that would simply spray the geoengineering, the, the, the barium, strontium, aluminium that we're finding everywhere? Now, they've also got unmanned helicopters that they can put chutes on, put directed energy weapons on and send out over wherever they want. So here's a hypothetical, folks. And actually, before I get onto that, for those people who don't believe they're spraying these things in the sky, I want to show you this report here that just came out about Sydney drinking water. Oh, no, that's Kangaroo Island. Sorry, folks. I'll find the report. Sydney drinking water. Shocking metallic sludge contaminating Sydney dams that supply drinking water. Inside this sludge of salts and minerals, there is iron, aluminium, manganese, lithium, strontium, barium, titanium, 
and there's going to be zinc and nickel. Strontium, barium, aluminium, lithium, titanium, manganese. This is a form of thermite, folks, and they're now finding this leaching into the Sydney water supply, okay? This is ABC News, you know, so it's, it's mainstream. They're saying, yes, this is happening. And again, Higgins Storm Chasers. Here, see here, they're reporting the truth, and they're also claiming there's uh, these things being found in, in hailstones as well. It wouldn't surprise me if they are, but I, I have to question this, this site because of the claim of these directed energy weapons being fitted by Raytheon with no photographs and claiming it comes from Higgins Storm Chasers when it doesn't. I want to get to this as well in a minute because there's some reports that Mike Morales is putting out and he's using this this app as well. So I want to have a look at some of this as well. Sorry about all these things that I'm, I'm showing through and going through here. But here's a hypothetical for you folks. What if you had guys out there doing exercises, and there's actually been an exercise that's run, I've lost the web page, I should have put it there for you, I'll try to find it and add it to the links. It was Operation Diamond something, Operation Diamond I think, and it was an exercise that was carried out uh, late last year where you had people out there dropping chaff, and we saw the reports of them dropping chaff. And if you do read the reports of those Learjets, you'll also find that they've been equipped with uh, devices to drop continuous chaff for like five or ten minutes or something. So um, this is very real. But what if you had people out there doing these exercises and they were dropping these ping pong balls, these ping pong balls full of stuff that ignites fires, but they set a timer on it. So it doesn't come off with fires. It, it doesn't come off with a, with a timer. It comes off with heat. And all you gotta do is, is blast it with a directed energy weapon with the right heat for a minute, and it explodes and turns into fire. Again, if you look at this, I mean, you can see down here, you've got things such as unmanned helicopters with directed energy weapons mounted on the bottom. Navy, it's, it's right there. This is Australia, folks. This is, this is the Australian, um, you know, airaffairs.com.au. This is Australian contractors. This is, and Navy's got these things. So. What if you went over and dropped ping pong balls over a fire zone? Then you sent a little unmanned helicopter across and it just put a wave. It just had a beam going down and it just did an invisible wave that ignited these ping pong balls. What do you expect to see in something like that? Well, I've got these reports here that have been sent to me which are extremely interesting of temperature spikes. And I mentioned this on the last show and I got it wrong. It wasn't, it wasn't a spike in an hour, it's a spike in a minute. In one minute, this temperature jumped up from 33 degrees to around about 49 degrees. Have a look at this, 52 degrees. This is at 4.30 p.m. at Glenroy Tumbarumba. Glenroy Tumbarumba, 4.20 p.m., 33 degrees. It jumps up there and, and 10 minutes later it's down. What if you had a helicopter a drone flying over there, and there's all bad fires in these areas, by the way, folks. There it is, it's down to 39 again at 450, and it's down there at 530. So that took an hour to do that spike, but some of them jump up there in a minute. It's very, very interesting. You can see here, again, where the spike is on, on the map. There it is, it goes up to 50.9 degrees. And here we have a whole bunch of temperature spikes. 49 degrees here, just jumps up from 34, 36, 49. Temperature spikes, folks. What would cause these type of temperature spikes? And they're all happening, coincidentally, of course, in fire zones. Have a look at this one, Cumbarumba. There it is, up to around about 49, 50 degrees, just in one spike. Could that be one of those unmanned helicopters flying over igniting these little balls? Just a theory, folks. Just a theory. Not saying it's true, but it's interesting. Here's another one. This is at Kosciuszko where we had fires break out. Here we go at 4.30 p.m., 52 degrees. It jumps up. No apparent reason. It just does it. Now, again, Tumbarumba, the spike there. So, Cabramurra. Kosciuszko, Tumbarumba, 
all have energy spikes, all had fires break out in those locations. And the question is, how would you use a directed energy weapon, folks? What would be the way you would use one of these things? You know, would you create a visible beam from the sky that people can see? Or would you do something like drop these ping pong balls that we know they've got and set them for heat release and then fly over there dropping an invisible beam on them so that they ignite? If you were directly under the beam, if there were certain structures or houses or cars directly under that beam, you may well see some of the stuff that we're seeing from these vehicles, some of these vehicles that appear to be hit with directed energy weapons, you would see that. Another thing as well, when you take into account the chemtrails and the, uh, the stuff that's going on, there's a video that I've got here. Um, as I said, the, the chemtrails are absolutely enormous. They really are. They're huge, folks. Um, I just got to find this site for you. But the chemtrails are all over the place um, and the fires are huge and there's been reports of huge fireballs and there's been reports of all, all sorts of incredible stuff like the, the firemen are saying that the, uh, the fires are hotter than they've ever seen. Um, it's, it's just, you know, ridiculous stuff. But imagine the government here has been you know, messing with the forestry for about 20 years. We haven't had any proper burns. We've had parks closed off and stuff in the last 20 years. So we've had heaps of, of leaf litter falling to the ground. And consider this, they've been spraying these chemicals in the sky all that time as well. So all of this leaf litter has been full of this stuff. It's all, it's all there. It doesn't go away. The aluminium, barium, strontium, it stays there. As, as the stuff turns into mulch, it, uh, it just, you know, goes, it, it just turns into the, the ground and the soil. But the aluminium is still there. And on my uh, second or third report that I did, link below in the list, you'll find uh, a video that was there from a guy in New Zealand who showed you how aluminium reacts in a fire. And we're seeing some incredible stuff in these fires. And imagine if you've got a eucalyptus tree, which is a pretty flammable anyway, uh, you know, of course, there's, there's moisture in trees, so you know, trees, a lot of trees, even the leaves, if, even if it's a bad fire, you're still going to find that there's leaves on the trees, they may be burnt, but there's moisture in there, so they'll be there and they'll, they'll wither and die and fall off, but after the fire, you're still going to see leaves on trees and you're still going to see trees standing, branches scorched, you know, a lot of the trees will come back, but you know, a lot of them won't, so you know, you've got to be you got to be really objective when you're looking at this stuff, folks, and not want anything to be true. But imagine you've got a eucalyptus tree, and it's been dropping all of this mulch, and it's been doing it for 20 years, and you've got 20 years worth of droppings on the ground beneath it, and all of it is soaked with aluminium and barium and strontium, this, this sparkler dust, this, this form of thermite. And so you get situations like this. Have a look at this firestorm here. The claim is again that this is a directed energy weapon. You see that yellow and white flame, folks. Now you see the white flame that came off that, the yellow flame, the way and the wind that came off that. It was like an explosion. What would cause that? Directed energy weapon or 20 years worth of mulch soaked in barium, strontium and aluminium lying on the ground around a big bunch of eucalyptus trees? Think about it, folks. You know, directed energy weapons, geoengineering, yes, they do use this stuff. But the question is, how do they use it? Do we see red beams from the sky? You know, no, we don't. That, that's not how you use this stuff. That's not at all how they would deploy it. It would be way too obvious. But what you're looking at there, that yellow flame, if you look at barium, strontium and aluminium, it burns yellow. 
strontium, I think, or barium burns white. So those white and yellow flames, the aluminium is very yellow. So, you know, different, different colors in these, these types of fires. That to me looks like 20 years build up of barium, strontium, and aluminium leaf mulch, and exactly what you get from that situation, folks. So, you know, we, we've got to really look at things and, and be careful about what we're presenting and be careful of the claims we're making. Now, there's also some claims that have been made by Mike Morales, and he's talking about grid patterns. Uh, on this particular day, I think this is the day, December 24. Now I might be a little bit forward. Uh, we have to go forward a day. How do I do that? I can't see. There it is. There. There, there. Um, we want to go forward to... Hang on, folks. I'm just going to move the camera. We want to go forward. Okay, January 7. No, we were right. January 2nd, January 1st, Kangaroo Island, he's been, I hope the camera's right, Kangaroo Island, he's been uh, focusing on, uh, he's talking about the grid patterns that you're seeing here. Now, I first saw this and I thought, okay, uh, is, that, is that factual? Or is that simply the way the app works? And then I go over here and I look at the fires over here and I find that these fires are all in grid patterns too. So much of it seems to be the way this app works. That's just the way it covers the ground. It's just a, it's a NASA app and that's what it does. And that's what I'm thinking. Then I, I went and I looked at some other fires around the world. Plenty of fires burning folks all over the place. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm gonna see this grid pattern again. I go here, I, I zoom in on these fires and I'm not seeing a grid pattern. I'm seeing spot fires. And in fact, nowhere am I going when I start examining this map am I seeing grid patterns of how the fires started or where the fires started. You know, occasionally you'll see you know, ones that are close together. You might see a square or whatever, but nothing like what I'm seeing here in Australia. So that's an interesting thing. And another interesting question is, how on earth did a fire break out on Kangaroo Island? And Kangaroo Island, folks, it's, uh, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty devastated. That's the resort on Kangaroo Island. If I can just get this picture to open, and what's going on. There we go, folks. That's, <laughs> that's the Kangaroo Island resort. Um, yeah, not looking good. Not looking good. I opened again. How many times did I open it? Okay, so... Looking at this, how many places do we see these grid patterns is the question. I don't know why everything's going so slow, folks. Must be something going on here. Maybe they don't like what I'm looking at. But um, I don't know what's going on here. So the question is, is this simply the way it does big fires that are very close together? Or are these where the ping pong balls were dropped? Just a theory, folks. Just a theory. But it's interesting that I'm seeing these grid patterns with the Australian fires. Again, perhaps it's because the fires are more intense. I mean, I'm open. Perhaps it's because the fires are more intense and they're all closer together, so that's simply the way they black in the air. But I'm just, it's interesting that I can't find anywhere else that I'm seeing these grid patterns. So, interesting theory. Interesting theory. But again, would this be directed energy weapons going zap, zap, zap with a laser? Or would you do, be something far more subtle? Simply fly an unmanned drone or even a Air Force guy on an exercise who doesn't know what he's doing. He's, it's all compartmentalised. He's just following orders. He just knows he's got to go out there and drop this stuff because they want readings for whatever chaff it is he's dropping. But what if he's not dropping chaff? What if you've got some guys dropping chaff and you've got other guys dropping ping pong balls? They may not even know what they're dropping. That's the question. Or what if you had 
one of those ping pong ball dispensers simply mounted to one of those unmanned helicopters and you went out and you dropped the ping pong balls and then you sent out one of those other unmanned helicopters and you just ignited them all as you will whenever you want to. And then over the top of the fires again, you keep spraying the barium, strontium and aluminium. And you could use those little drones for that or you could use these unmanned helicopters. I mean, there's all sorts of possibilities of, of how they could do this, folks. But that is definitely chemtrails, geoengineering spraying over the fires. There's no doubt about it. I mean, look at these lines, folks. Look at these straight lines through here, this cross hatching. This is spraying. This isn't clouds, it isn't smoke, it's spraying. Why would the fires be burning on Kangaroo Island, people ask as well. Well, have a look at this, folks. Kangaroo Island shows rock solid promise for lithium. And you really need to look at where the minerals are located in Australia. Have a look at this, folks. And have a look at where the mining operations are. What we've got here, what they would be looking for. Local aquifers, generally low productivity. Porous, see, here's the Great Artesian Basin. This is the stuff they've been pumping the water out of. And for the people who claim the Great Artesian Basin doesn't feed the coastal rivers, well, look, folks, it does, you see. It's, it's huge. The Great Artesian Basin is a huge body of underground water. And think how much they've been pumping out of that for the aquifers to go dry. Think about it, folks. I mean, and not all of them are dry. Some of them, a couple are still flowing, a couple of little waterfalls, a bit of a trickle still going on. So, yeah, but mainly all the creeks are dry around here. So think how much water they've been pumping out of this, folks. Something else that I found, which I found to be rather disturbing, is, and this is apart from the fires, but I think this is relevant, Zionist Federation of Australia, Jerusalem yeah. Prize presented to Scott Morrison, um, this is kind of scary. Question is, where does this man's allegiances lie? It certainly doesn't lie with the Australian people. I don't know if you saw the video of him turning his back on someone. He literally turned his back on them. You know, like there was a woman who, I'm sure everybody's seen the clip, it was a young woman and she said, I'll shake your hand if you send more money to our rural fire service. And he grabbed her hand and shook it. But when she said that, he literally turned his back on her and walked away. Didn't give her a hug. Didn't say, yes, I'm going to do everything I can to help the situation. He literally didn't say a word and he turned his back and walked away. Does this man have any soul at all? You know, at least, at least when we had bad fires on, what was it, Black Friday, Kevin Rudd suspended Parliament and he went and helped the victims and, and did everything he could to, to you know, help, help the country and to help the people. You know, and I don't trust any politicians, but at least he showed some form of humanity. This guy has not shown any humanity in these fires at all. This man has, has no heart at all, and the fact that he's a member of, of this organisation may explain why. And something else that's been quite disturbing that's come since these fires started are reports like this. Had a bit of a shock today. Eight cops raided my home with a search warrant, took my iPhone, iPad, hard drives, number of documents, just fishing. So this is what's going on here, folks. We're in a pretty precarious situation. But I wanted to look at all that and I wanted to just discuss the concept of directed energy weapons and how they may be being used and the importance of people vetting information before they're sharing it. You know, reports of beams coming from the sky, this is, this is from Star Wars, folks. Go and watch the Avengers movies or Star Wars if you want to see beams coming from the sky. Microwaves are invisible. You don't see beams coming from the sky. That's not how they deploy them. You know, for those people, and this is a good point, a lot of people who are claiming this absolutely believe uh, Judy Wood's uh, theory on what, what happened to the Twin Towers on 9-11. There's a lot of people out there who believe the Twin Towers were brought down by directly at energy weapons because they simply turned to dust before our eyes. And uh, Judy Wood put out quite a comprehensive book on the topic. Caused a lot of argument, caused a lot of debate, but there's a lot of people out there who absolutely believe that. So if you're one of those people who do believe that, if the Twin Towers was taken down by directed energy weapons, ask yourself, did you see any red laser beams coming from the sky? Did you see any blue laser beams coming from the sky? Did you see any laser beams at all? 
you know, red, blue, visible laser beams are things from Hollywood folks. They put this stuff out there so people see it and they go, oh, it must be real, and they don't vet the information. Now, I'm not saying that the Navy or military or the people flying these planes or anything like this started these fires deliberately. I'm not even saying that they did drop these ping pong balls and use directed energy weapons to ignite them. I'm simply exploring the theory of it. Because when you look at all the stuff that is on these websites and you look at the grid pattern, it's an interesting thing. But when you look at some of the stuff that's on, on these websites, such as the, where is it? This one, Air Power Australia. I urge you to go through that website, have a look at some of the pages and have a look at some of the stuff that they've got on that website. It's very interesting stuff, folks. You look at this, you've got uh, high power fibre laser, Raytheon laser area defense system, uh, weapons test bed, uh, different programs they're running, uh, high energy laser technology demonstrator, tactical high energy laser, airborne laser. It's all there, folks. And this, again, is a legitimate Australian contractor to the Australian military. So, yes, these things exist. And again, look at the market research future for directed energy weapons. It's all there, folks. So yeah, this stuff is real and there's every possibility that this may have well been how the fires started because they started simultaneously all across the country. And as I've said so many times, this is, this is about Agenda 21, folks. It's about relocating people into the cities. And, you know, relocating people, it's not going to be forced relocation. You're not going to have the military coming in and just grabbing people and saying, no, no, you can't, you can't go home. It's not going to be like that. But you're going to find a lot of people don't want to go home. There's a lot of people in Australia who are uninsured because as I explained in previous reports again link, link below the way the insurance is set up in New South Wales uh, it's designed so that most people won't have their houses insured and there is this also this report that is being put out here of funding that's going out to if I can find it funding 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 where is it funding that's going out to can't find it doesn't matter I think it's it's five billion dollars funding that's going out to rebuild and all sorts of stuff but you're gonna find a lot of people don't want to go home a lot of people are going to be going back to a black wasteland and they're going to think wow it's too dangerous to live here because of climate change so I'll take the government's offer of a commission house in town and a lot of people won't a lot of people will stay on their properties and they'll, they'll try to make it work but then you'll find that when these new rezoning things come out as that report that I showed you the draft that got leaked to me uh, you can look at this yourself. You can see uh, down here, I think it's in section 13, they're talking about uh, rezoning and uh, fire problems and blah, 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 koala habitat, bushfires. And they're talking about climate change and they're talking about here, where is it? I showed it to you on a previous report. I should have it highlighted here. Commit to urgent action to respond to global emergency climate emergency and they're talking about getting people out of fire zones okay um, it's it's sustainability sustainable development it's all the same thing folks this is agenda 21 but it's not going to be forced relocation it'd be too obvious if they forced people to relocate what they will do is they will push the whole global warming thing and they will put the rates up and put the insurance premiums up on people's houses who live in these places and they'll simply make it impossible for you to be able to afford to live in a fire prone area. Planning priorities. New development will be restricted in areas vulnerable to natural hazards. Here a risk to life is high. Develop specific natural hazard chapters to include planning controls to protect and mitigate developments in areas prone to natural hazards. So this is what they're going to do, folks, and this hasn't been introduced yet, okay? This has been leaked to me, but it is the plan between now and 2040. So this is where they're going with it. So people who think this isn't part of Agenda 21, yes, it is. And again, go and look at the Clara project. I'll try to find it, put a link below, the high-speed rail, all this sort of stuff. People saying, well, these fires are following the high-speed rail. They're far bigger than the high-speed rail, folks. Sure, that's part of it, I'm sure. The Clara project, the smart cities, you know, this is what Agenda 21 is. They want everybody in controlled population areas 
They want surveillance cameras everywhere. They want all these LED lighting and all this stuff everywhere. They just want to be able to control everybody. They want to introduce a cashless society, have everybody in these smart cities, all connected by rails. And you don't go out to the country because we let it return to nature. But are they really going to let it return to nature or are they simply going to mine the whole place while you're not looking? Leave a few trees there so it looks like it's returned to nature. Like if you go up Springbrook Mountain here on the Gold Coast to the National Park, it looks great. Forest, beautiful rainforest. But you walk a quarter of a mile through that National Park and you find huge clearings with D9s in there where they've been pulling logs out for years. So, you know, this is what they do, folks. They set it up as a pristine national park area and then they block off areas and say you can't go there, it's to protect the forest. And you find that what they're doing in the forest is pulling it down and mining, I would suggest, in many places. And I think that is what the plan for this is. I mean, the amount of lithium that has been discovered in Australia and the need for lithium right now for lithium batteries, you know, lithium's almost the new gold and there is literally trillions of dollars to be made from the lithium market in Australia. So you really got to look at the deeper picture here, folks, of what's really going on here. And I have absolutely no doubt in, in saying that these fires have been deliberately set up over the last 20 years. This event has been planned for a long time. This is why little Johnny Howard disarmed us with the Port Arthur debacle, which is a complete debacle, folks. And if you really look into the Port Arthur massacre, you'll find there's no evidence to actually convict Martin Bryan of the crime. That's why he never went to trial. That's why they changed his lawyer. He had a lawyer there telling him to plead guilty and blah, blah, blah. And he, he wouldn't plead guilty. He said, no, I didn't do it. And there's reports that he wasn't even anywhere near the Broad Arrow Cafe when the shooting started. You know, and again, you know, the shooting was, was the most incredible shooting you've ever seen in, in six different locations over 30 minutes. You know, the, the, the hit to kill ratio was just off the charts. And there's no way this was done by, you know, a mentally impaired guy with no gun experience. So look into the Port Arthur Massacre, folks. Also, the guns that were, were used on the Port Arthur Massacre were, were confiscated by Victorian police the year before. So, you know, there's a lot going on there that people aren't, aren't looking at. But they disarmed us. And then they started spraying the skies and things. And they've been building up to this for a long time. This has been all set in motion over 20 years. And it's about Agenda 21. This, this fire season is deliberate. The way they're pushing the rain away is deliberate. I, I'm absolutely convinced of it. I mean, well, the thing is, that's what all the evidence says. And if you look at the capabilities of these people, you look at the attitude of these people, and this is what I would suggest is going on. You know, the possibility of directed energy weapons, very high possibility, but I think it's very important that people who are making these claims vet the photographs, vet the information that they're sharing, and actually go and look into directed energy weapons and how they work, you know, or what their capabilities are, how they use them, where they're deployed. You know, it's all there. They, they don't have any problem telling you about it. So, you know, one thing people have to understand, though, it's not laser beams coming from the sky that you can see. That would completely defeat the purpose of having them. You had too many people. You'd have, you try using these things in the fires near Sydney, you're going to have most of Sydney looking up there and they're going to see these things. You know, it would have been done before the smoke was in the air, so, you know, they would have seen all these beams. You'd have hundreds and thousands of people reporting beams coming from the sky. You know, that's not what we're seeing, folks. And again, for those people who believe this was what happened to the Twin Towers, ask yourself if you saw any directed energy beams in the Twin Towers, folks, in, in any of that stuff. So just be careful what you're vetting, folks, and... Let's really seize this opportunity to really present factual information to people because we have an opportunity to wake a lot of people up with this, folks. A lot of people are looking into this and a lot of people know that they're not being told the truth on what's going on here. So, you know, you've got to be careful to look at the bigger picture and you've got to be very careful to approach every event that we see that is staged by these people as a completely separate event. Because that's what they do. I mean, all they had to do was use directed energy weapons in paradise. And it, it's very obvious that there's there's so much evidence, melted engine blocks and all sorts of stuff. No fire trail to paradise as well. It's supposed to be a bushfire. Where did it break out? All these fires raging. If you look at the forest around paradise, <laughs> there's no way to get there. And you've got houses that are burnt in the middle of the forest, but there's no fire trail to get there. This is definitely directed energy weapons, I would say. But people see that and they go, oh. Now it's directed energy weapons and they attribute it to every fire, which is, of course, why they made paradise so obvious. So everyone would take the bait and then spit out all the disinformation and embellishments that they're going to put out with the next event they stage. 
you know, all the flack that I got over the Christchurch shooting when I reported on that, you know, people saying, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm crazy for saying what I'm saying. You know, all I had to do to set that up was to stage Sandy Hook and the Boston bombing, which were pretty obviously staged. It's doubtful there was even victims in that. So, you know, we've got to be careful what we're reporting, folks. We really do. But anyway, that's what I wanted to share with you today. I'll bring you another report as soon as I've got something more to share, something relevant on the fires. I'll try to get back to the radio shows soon, um, but I'm, I'm really not very well at the moment, folks, and uh, I don't know what's going on, but I'm just not, not feeling up to par. I've got some stomach stuff going on, so I have to attend to that, have to attend to myself. Unfortunately, I spend a lot of time attending to other people, and I tend to neglect myself. I've been trying to get an assistant to come and, and move in somewhere around or live somewhere nearby to just come and help me and make sure I eat properly for a long time, but it, it just hasn't happened. So, you know, I kind of get involved in work and I, I kind of forget to take care of myself sometimes, which is a, a little bit irresponsible, I guess. But, um, yeah, I'm doing what I can. And I'll bring you another report as soon as I'm able. Um, thank you to all the people who send me so many kind emails and so many messages. And listen, I've got, I've got something like... I mean, I've got two Facebook accounts and one support page or two support pages, and I've got something like a combined, I think, 120, 130 messages on my Facebook pages, and I've got something like 300 emails to get through. Um, I really appreciate all the stuff people send me. Um, I can't answer a lot of the big emails. If you could just maybe, just, just don't email me unless it's really important, you've got information for me or you really need me for something just for the next couple of days and let me try to get through this backlog of emails I have to go through. And I have to go through them all because a lot of people send me a lot of information. So, I mean, thank you to the people who do, but just <laughs> let it rest for a couple of days while I get through this incredible backlog that I've got here. So thanks for listening, folks. That's pretty well all I had to share today. As I said, I think it's important for people to vet this information. I'll bring you another report as soon as I can. Thank you for listening. In La Keshe.